We're out on Devil's Lake here today and we're basically set up on deeper main lake structure. In most cases, we're not finding fish right on top of the rocks. And so typically the sweet spots are spots where you have these big boulders, then you have small rocks next to them. And typically that edge that where those smaller rocks are, that's where we're gonna find some really big walleyes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Big predator looking for a meal. You know, rock piles can hold an awful lot of fish in the wintertime. We're on Devil's Lake today, but uh, you know, in a lot of different fisheries, you know, come midwinter especially, you know, you're gonna find fish, walleyes in particular, relating to deep rocks, but there's an art to fishing rocks. And, you know, I think in a lot of cases, sometimes anglers can rely too much on their map chip in the sense that it's a contour and it's not exact. And when you're fishing these rocks, the more precise you are, the better. And so, you know, at the end of the day, I still like to drill holes and I like to find right on the edge of the rocks because a lot of times the big rocks hold fish. A lot of times those big fish seem to follow the base and so I like to drill holes, find the very top of the biggest rocks and then find the edges of them and that sharp edge, as close as you can get to that edge, that's usually the ticket for finding fish. I'm just going to drop this down. I'm going to keep my transducer high here and in the same spot. So right now we're right at the top and just make sure your transducer is the same distance down the hole with each hole that you check. We're gonna go to this hole here and see where we're at. See here, we got 19 feet here. So we have a two foot drop right there. And so right now we're right off the edge of these rocks here. I just wanna double check this over here. And it's still 19 feet. And so right now it's flat and it pops up three feet and so we're just going to drill a few holes closer together we're going to get right on the edge but you know you can save a waypoint for these spots but sometimes it can be a false confidence and since I can't tell you how many times I've come out and hit a waypoint and then come back the next day and I'm right squared up on the waypoint and my hole's 10 feet away and 10 feet isn't close enough on this and so the closer you can get to the edge the better and so drill holes and even if you have to just mark the depth with your fingernail but just get that exact preciseness because when you're fishing big boulders, it's gonna help you catch a lot more walleyes. There, it's 20 below outside. So we're gonna set up the hub. I know exactly where we wanna be. So we're gonna be comfortable. comes one. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there we go. Ha ha, look at that. Come here. <laughs> oh, never gets old. Look at that pose. Just a beautiful fish. Fish unhooked. Look at that. Cool. Just love it when they growl like that. Get baited back up. You know, and this is spot out on the spot fishing. In that, you know, we're fishing structure, clear water. Sometimes these windows can be pretty tight where, you know, I mean, some nights you might get a half an hour window where they roll through and bite good. And so we're going to maximize our setup by using more than one line. You know, some states can use two lines. In North Dakota here, you can use four lines. So I've got a couple of dead sticks next to me. And the whole premise is just when these fish roll through and bite and making it count. And that's where these hubs really shine. Hubs are phenomenal whenever you need to spread your lines out and fish multiple lines because if you keep your lines too tight, you're gonna get tangled up. We're gonna put out as many dead sticks as we can. What I like to do is use a, I just like to have a wide gap hook. That's just a clam blade jig. 
I like to nick that minnow through the hide right behind the gill plate. That way the weight of that jig will anchor that minnow. Typically when these fish grab it, they grab it onto the head. So that way you don't have to wait very long to set the hook. That rod tip dunks, swing at them. I like the fine bottom. Bring it up about a foot. You know, there's a lot of different ways where you can use dead sticks. I like to spread them out just so that I don't get tangled lines. If you put your dead sticks close to your jigging rod, you know, that's a risk you take. Deeper water, big fish, you know, wrapping up on lines, which is something I hate. But try to spread them out. That's what makes these hubs so nice. But the other thing I like to do is, you know, use longer rods, but I like to be able to reach them. And so we're just setting them up in here in just a, just a rod stand. And this rod here is a 36 inch meat stick in our Jason Mitchell line. You just see how soft that tip is. This is a great pan fish rod. But it's also a great dead stick rod when you get these longer lengths where that, that tip, you can see it working where that minnow's vibrating. Then that rod tip will just dunk down. That rod tip dunks, just pick up the rod and lift. And that's all there is to it. But that is just a phenomenal dead stick rod. There's a fish. There he got him. Wow. I love the big head shakes. They don't like to come off that bottom. Oh yeah, this is uh, acting like a walleye. Just taking my time. Oh yeah, there she is. Nice walleye. Oh yeah, look at there. Oh, that is a dandy. Come here. Oh, come here. <laughs> oh, get a hold of her here. Yeah, on the dead stick. You know, some days, <laughs> some days, you're glad you put out these extra lines. And you know, if you're going to sit in one spot, you might as well use as many lines as you can. That's the way I look at it. right in the corner of the mouth. Beautiful. I love that. You know, I didn't even mark that fish, but you know, it's funny. Sometimes you don't mark them where they're not coming right underneath you. And, that minnow will just start getting frantic, and there's nothing like <laughs> a frantic minnow, and you just watch that rod tip just dunk. <laughs> I love that. Let's get baited up and catch another one. You know, there's a lot of different ways to dead stick. Some people use a slip bobber. Uh, I like to a lot of times just use a, a soft tip rod, just have the rod and the rod holder where I can just set the hook immediately. And the biggest thing is when you hook up that minnow, is just have that wide gap hook right behind the gill because a lot of times when a walleye will grab that minnow, they grab them by the head or that tail just hanging out of their mouth. And that way you don't have to count to five, you don't have to count to ten, just if that rod tip dunks, set the hook and it's almost immediate and you don't have to worry about fish swallowing the hook. But have those dead sticks where you can reach them. You just see that quivering on the tip and you'll see that minnow get active and if it just stops and just dips, lift. And when you're setting the hook with a dead stick, don't think of it as a swing and a hook set. Just lift that rod up and just crank on the reel. A lot of times we're setting the hook by simply turning the reel. And so don't swing and miss, just lift and you're going to catch a lot more fish. You know, in this one-two punch, you know, with a jigging rod and a couple of dead sticks, it's nothing new. You know, it's been around walleye fishing for a long time or ice fishing for a long time. But, you know, I think sometimes people forget about things at work, you know, and maybe make fishing more complicated than it is. But, you know, even if you're not catching any fish on the jigging rods, I can't tell you how many times where the jigging rod will make the dead sticks more effective in the sense that you'll call in fish with the jigging rod 
If they're not aggressive to hit that lure or presentation, whatever it is that you're using, they'll just swim right next door here and, and hit the dead stick. And so very effective, been working and catching walleyes for a long time, but uh, definitely nothing to forget about. Oh, here's got a fish on the dead stick here. Got him. Come on up. Oh yeah, there she is. That's just a perfect eater right there. <laughs> Come here, settle down. Yeah, you don't need to keep those big fish when you got perfect eaters like that. That's just a perfect eating fish in my mind. 15, 16 inch walleye, that will look good in grease. Now, thin diameter flutter spoons have really become a hot item with walleye fishing and perch fishing in the last couple of years. And so when you get in clear water especially, these fish can see a flutter spoon from a long way. So a leech flutter spoon in particular has been a lure that just puts off a lot of flash, but it also has a very slow, seductive wobble. Now, new for this year, we've got three packs. We've designed some Shields exclusive colors that are just it's a hot color palette no matter where we travel. And so there's a gold, pink, perch, then this shiner pattern, and these patterns, no matter what type of water you're fishing, no matter what type of forage base, those are three proven colors that are gonna catch a lot of walleyes for you this season. You know, so often in a lot of different bodies of water, you know, you're gonna see some of your more aggressive bites at early ice and late ice, and then, you know, you can get in this midwinter doldrum, per se. You know, the activity might slow down, your windows of activity might become more narrow or more defined, especially in mornings and evenings when you're dealing with clear water, or in some cases after dark, but, uh, you know, that's typically a situation where combining that dead stick presentation with jigging can be a one-two punch. And, you know, there's some days where, you know, you'll be jigging and fish just won't come in on the spoon, but they'll hit the dead sticks. And there's times where if you even move that jigging lure, you know, the fish scatter. And so you just have to monitor that activity, that level of aggressiveness with the fish. And so, you know, when you're marking fish and you're jigging aggressively, and they're just not even entering the cone angle, and they're just staying on the edge of the cone angle. You know, sometimes that's a situation where, you know, you just put the jigging rod away and just use all dead sticks. But uh, by and large, you know, that jigging will bring the fish in, and if they're not aggressive enough to hit that spoon or swim lure or whatever you're using for a lure, at least they're going to hit that minnow that's just laying there. And a lot of times that dead stick is just too much for them to resist. Oh, got something bopping this rod. Got him. Come on up. <laughs> Here she comes. Oh yeah, there. There we go. <laughs> nice. Get her unhooked here. Just that fed head minnow, that's all you need. Perfect. I'm going to keep that fish for dinner. Oh, here comes one. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it. Come on. Oh, there he is. Oh, good fish. Good fish. Oh, wow. I love big head shakes. Transducer on the wall. Come on up. Oh yeah, big walleye. Ooh, look at this fish. Oh, here she comes, here she comes, here she comes. Oh, wow. Look at that, oh, look at that. That is a gorgeous walleye. Oh, oh, oh. In that clear water, you can see down 10 feet. 
and they look even bigger below the ice, but that is fun stuff right there. Look at that fish. Wow. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Look at this fish in the water. That is just a that is just a beautiful walleye right there. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> I love that. You know, and in clear water, what I like to do is I like to use flutter spoons a lot. There's just a clam pro tackle leech flutter spoon and in my mind, flutter spoons, you know, they just have a just a very seductive wobble and they put off a lot of flash. And so stained water, dirty water, a lot of times I'll use a rattling spoon, but uh, clear water, that's when these flutter spoons shine. Beautiful fish. Oh, here's one. There we go. Oh yeah. She's gotta be getting close. Oh yeah, here she is right there. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, the dead stick strikes and it's just a one-two punch. You know, obviously the aggressive fish, they hit that, that spoon that you're jigging and but you know every fish you catch on the dead stick is a bonus and you know some nights some days the dead stick accounts for a big part of the fish you catch but bonus wall i'll take it any night beautiful there she goes beautiful thing <laughs> here comes a big mark Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, big fish. <laughs> Gotta get this transducer out. Oh, there she comes. Nice walleye. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That, that is a walleye. Oh. That fish just made a big mark and just came in and just ate it. I love that. You know, when they show up two feet off the bottom, a foot off the bottom, just this big mark that hangs around. Big predator looking for a meal. Little hooker here. You know, we're just, I like to use braided line when I'm jigging for walleyes. But I just have a fluorocarbon leader on there, eight pound braid. Eight pound fluorocarbon leader. That's just a deadly combination. Beautiful fish. Oh, look at this fatty here. We're just gonna let her go. That was cool. I just love, just love watching those big fish swim away. That's just rewarding. That's the setup right there. And that clear water, I'd love to lift it up a little bit too. Don't be afraid to lift it up three, four feet at a time and just let it fall. But them flutter spoons, those fish just love to come in on them. And that high lift, it's just deadly at times. And when you see a fish shoot up two, three feet off the bottom, you're gonna catch that fish most of the time. By and large, there's not a lot of rock on Devil's Lake. If you look at the entire lake, you know, I would say a big part of the bottom composition is a soft bottom, whether it's mud or sand. You know, a lot of this land was farm fields at one time, but when you can find rock piles, especially over deeper water, you know, typically they're gonna hold fish. And so I spend a tremendous amount of time looking for rock piles on Devil's Lake. I take all the tools I can get, whether it's aerial imagery, whether it's contour maps, you know, Google Earth from, you know, previous years when the lake was dry. And then obviously side scanning and side imaging over the open water period where I can just drive my boat around and look for these spots. But, uh, you know, these deep rock piles can be the ticket. And typically as a general thumb, when you find the bigger, rounder boulders, and then there's small boulders around them, typically those big round rocks, a lot of times hold big fish. And a lot of times those big fish 
I like to run right along the base of them where those big rocks turn into small rock. That transition line, that's the key. And some of these spots, Cactus Point, Bird Island, Fort Totten, you know, there's areas out East Bay and East Devil's Lake where we've got those deep rock piles anywhere from 30 to 50 feet of water. And some of these rock piles, you know, back when the lake was really low, People actually piled up the rocks, used them for duck blinds, and hunted ducks off of some of these deep points that are now in 40 feet of water. There's other rock piles that are created where when the farmers farmed some of this land, they pushed all the rocks to the edge of the field or to the corner of the field, and you know today they're covered in 20 feet of water and they hold walleyes, but uh, definitely put in the time to find these rock piles on Devil's Lake because so many different times of the year, they can be the ticket. This obsession for fishing has been brought to you by Shields. Vexilar, Clam, K Drill, Ice Armor by Clam, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism, Clam Pro Tackle, Cooper Chevrolet, Travel Manitoba. And Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods.